Um, uh, on yesterday's game, um, I forgot your name, Kate. It nearly went our said. You'd be the better team. If, 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 Look, Tomale scores that header at the end. It would have been exactly what I said. A very narrow win for Man United, but with Spurs being a better team. We don't really need to speak about the game too much. We did a bad, big match reaction on it. There's no point dissecting Man United right now. We know the issues. But Spurs have had quite a lot of praise from some quarters, saying, look, with all the injuries you've got, you're still playing that nice brand of football. You are really progressing. Others, like Roy Keane, are saying, how can we praise a team that's drawing? It doesn't make any sense. But you're only a handful of points at the top, halfway through the season. One, you know, a signing in Dragusen, your players returning. You have to be very excited about your second half of this season coming up with, you know, with with Mickey now back and uh, James Madison close to a return as well, because you're right up there. And a lot of people thought you were going to fall off completely when you got those injuries two months ago. But you're, you're, you're a win or so away now from being top of the league. Yeah, I mean, Richarlison, for starters, gets a lot of stick, but he's had more um, goal contributions for Spurs than Gabriel, Martinelli and Jesus put together. So all these Richarlison haters, you know, that that's the first thing. Um, I was gutted in the fact that I think if we'd have even just had Kulu yesterday, we would have beat you. I think as soon as I saw the team and I, thought, and I see Skippy and Hoybier in uh, midfield, I thought, nah, We'll be lucky if we get a draw here because they're, they're just not good enough. Um, but, yeah, do you know what? We went behind twice at the Etihad, got a draw. Went behind twice at the Emirates, got a draw. Went behind twice at Old Trafford, got a draw. So the mentality monsters are... Uh, that's something Spurs have lacked a lot in recent times. And, you know, Angie's gradually bringing it back. But I cannot wait to have Madison back... Um, this Dragusin looks like a decent signing. Um, bit concerned with the wingers. I feel a bit more comfortable if we can get a winger or two um, come in this window. Um, but I was just <laughs> sorry. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's exciting times at Spurs. Like I say, I think if we hadn't had the twelve injuries that we've got out, we'd be sitting in a very different position in the league. I really do. What were you with the mentality monsters before? Because it's coming back. When did that happen? Did I miss? No, I, well, against Poch, we never really knew when we was beaten. We used to come back a lot, but that's oh, what I'm saying. It's been missing a lot. Of time. That's you what you were, mean. You knew the will to play for the manager. Yeah, yeah. you knew. Yeah. You, you knew you were beaten in finals. <laughs> it's just that I was joking, Kate, but I know what you mean. Okay. Yeah, you know, no, I mean, you, got, you, you guys look good yesterday. I, I mean, me and Staffy said it in the match reaction afterwards, and and, and the clip went out as well that. This Man United fans got exposed yesterday. The ones that are blindly back in Ten Hag, and not that he's, he's not wrong about everything. Ten Hag got exposed yesterday. This idea that you need all your players, you need every single signing before you can start playing your brand of football is a complete and utter lie. And I, I think that was demonstrated. So I, I thought that Roy Keane was a little harsh with the whole why are people praising Tottenham. They're at the start of something where this manager is playing with a squad that's predominantly not his. As long as he's backed, genuinely believe this, as long as he is backed and you keep buying quality, this man could go on to win you anything. Mm -hmm. Genuinely, you could go on to win anything under this manager. Now, it's going to be hard with, with City, with Liverpool, with Arsenal. Who, who knows who's going to come up next year? European competition as well. But I just like the way his team plays. And he's even adapted during the season. So... The, the, the way you played in that Chelsea game, you've had red cards since then. You didn't do that. There's been better game management. And I just think he's adapting and he realises, I, I love the fact that he's not arrogant. He just goes, right, this little element of my style isn't working, so I'm going to adjust it and make it work. Where there are some managers out there who just know this is my plan for the season. It isn't working, but I'm just going to persevere with it anyway, no matter how bad it goes. And I think, you could you could accuse Potter of that, Ten Hogs in that space. This season, even Arteta falls into that category of why don't you make the change? Uh, what has Mo done to himself? Well, it's gone ultra. Oh, my eyes. I thought I'd have an. Oh, my camera is eating up for two hours now. My camera is eating up for two hours. I thought. I thought I was having a stroke or something. I thought my yeah, eyes were yeah, gone. Yeah, I was like panicking then. The camera's I heating my, up for two my, hours. I was checking my, my Apple Watch to see if my heart rate was all right. I got panicky <laughs> then. Oh, my God, everyone's going blue. So, yeah, I thought you guys were impressive really yesterday. And, look, United, you know, with the injuries you had, players that were missing or an AFCOM and everything else, taking the lead, we should beat you. But, we, you know, we couldn't do it. And, yeah, I think Spurs are, are going places under Postacoglu. He Maybe looks, love the 10 times. 
And Terry, this is exactly why. You know, on the last top six, when you, when you asked me if we had a different manager, manager, do you think you'd be a lot higher? And I mentioned Ange. And this, this is the reason why. Look at his midfield yesterday. And he didn't run away from his principles. I'm seeing Skip, Hoiberg and, and, and those players that he had playing the exact same way that he would like Madison and them lot to play. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's why, for me, he is a, a brave manager. He doesn't think about um, the opposition too much. He thinks about how he can, he, how he can hurt the opposition. Do you know what I'm saying? So for me, Ange... Listen, he's doing a great job, man. And even if he doesn't succeed at Spurs, there'll be a lot of top clubs looking at him. A lot of top clubs looking at him. Yeah. This year, so the gender against Ten Hag whilst Terry backed Klopp to turn it round last season. Well, because Klopp hadn't abandoned his philosophy of football, if Ten Hag was trying to play his brand of football, but it was just not hitting because of missing players, I'd be behind him. But he's told us that he isn't and that he's never going to. So... I don't understand what I'm meant to back. The guy has told me he ain't going to do it. They're so sheep. I, They're it's, sheep. Not an, it's not an agenda, Alexander. It's I'm supporting Man United by calling out what's right. Blindly supporting this manager right now is not supporting Man United. It's hurting it. Sometimes you've got to be cruel to be kind. I do it all the time with my children. Sometimes you, my son cries when I say he's got to go to bed. I don't let him stay up till midnight just because he wants to. He has to go to bed and I make him. Do you know what I'm saying? Like there are certain times in life where tough love is needed. And you've got, listen, this isn't, if he turns it around, by the way, and starts winning, you won't see me with a long standing agenda against him. I'll go, he turned it around. Now I back him. But if he isn't going to play the brand of football that he is accustomed to, the only brand of football we've ever seen him play, if he isn't going to try and instruct that and coach that into our team, I don't get the point of Ten Hag because what he's trying to do right now isn't working and you don't need a fully fit squad to play good football. There's so many examples of it. Sheffield United play better football than us. Luton play better football. I want to watch Leighton Orient play this year. I'm telling you, pound for pound, they move the ball better than Man United. I watched it and they're in it's League not One. Even about which, it's not even about which football is more attractive because that's very subjective. You can enjoy a different True. brand of football that I th than what I enjoy. The thing is, uh, and it's it's very unfortunate in this fan base, there's a lot of sheep and they feel like they need to say what's right just in case if the manager turns it around, they could say, well, I believed in him and you didn't. And if he doesn't turn it around, he gets sacked. They're going to be like, well, I, I, you know, I stood by him until, until you know, the end and and I was a good fan, blah, blah, blah. They think, they think if you do that, if you back the manager blindly, it makes you a better fan than someone who actually could sit here, use their brain, and use their eyes and see that there's a clear issue and try to find a solution to it. If anyone is sitting here and still saying that, this is why I said yesterday, I'm very happy for yesterday's game. I think this game exposed Ten Hag and exposed the issue more than anything else. This was the perfect game for it because we had a manager who came in who had less time in the Premier League, less money spent, and less first team players available away from home and still was able to impose a style of play versus our manager who decided to be a coward, go into his shell, and demonstrated it by the performance on the pitch. He had Casemiro on the bench, and he still decided to bring on McTominay because he knows McTominay can get that one chance where he gets a header on goal. And he actually got it and still didn't do it. He still didn't score it. He decided to play Aaron Wen Basaka in left back in order to nullify their fast winger instead of saying, you know what, my philosophy is to build from the back. I'm going to put the best left back available to help me along with my back line and the goalkeeper to build from the back because this is who we are and this is the football we play. He told me he wants to do that. I'm not making that up. But when you tell me something and I see you doing something different, then I'm not going to be lied to. I am not a sheep. I, I, I could see when someone is lying to me or not. Most United fans don't want to wake up to that issue because they want to be the good fans that stick by the manager no matter what. They want to give him a timeline to turn it around with no evidence. They always say, oh, what well, I said, I'm not going to speak about the manager until three years. But what's going to happen in three years? Why, why is the timeline going to fix the issues? If the manager's not fixing the issues, what makes you think a timeline is going to fix the issues? So listen, the faster we get rid of this manager, the better, because as I said earlier, when we mentioned Benzema, I want us for once to be proactive. We can already see that this project failed. Instead of con continuing with it, just get rid of the manager, bring in an interim, and it, listen, everyone's like, who do you want? Who do you want? Who do you want? This is what I want from the interim, whoever it is. Ineos come in, give me an interim, and they're going to set a goal with him. Listen, you're only here for the second half of the season, but we need you to be here because next season we want to do one, two, three, four, 
And in the meantime, you're going to help us identify the players that are currently in this team that are good or not good enough for that. The manager comes in. Maybe you get a slight manager, uh, 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 um, uh, a manager bounce, gets a, get a few results. And by the time the manager is gone, you bring in a new manager in the summer. And you're like, listen, this is the squad we're leaving you with. These players are gone. And we're going to start identifying the players that we want to bring in instead. To me, that's being proactive. Just continuing with this is a waste of time. And it's a waste of everyone's time, honestly. I, I, I agree with you on that. I want to do some of these super chats here. Uh, this is uh, Kate. Uh, Richie costs 60 million. You should be seeing this form from him is what uh, that uh, matrix said. Yeah, but my point was, I, I don't disagree with that 100%, but I, my point was he, was he gets mocked on this program all the time, particularly by Arsenal fans, and yet he's doing more than their front three put together. That was my point. He gets mocked because he scored, what was it, one goal last season? Yeah, but... Egal, yes. please don't also, also, he, has, he has more goals than Saka, so yeah. say that. Also, it's a little bit of banter from both sides. We don't need to have a debate about banter, personally. <laughs> um, 